<laughs> Oops, don't want to hit my pig. Oops, get away from that pig behind there. There we go. <laughs> Getting smarter in my old age. Woo! Nice. <laughs> oh, sweet. Empty, but that's okay. Hey, Hickok 45. Yes, we have a Steyr uh, AUG. How's that for an interesting looking uh, rifle? Bull puppy design, bull pup design. Uh, I don't think I've ever fired one of these until this week. I have seen them. Uh, a viewer lent this to us, and uh, we've had it for about a week. Been uh, anxious to get it out, play with it. We had some other toys we wanted to play with first. But this is pretty interesting. Uh, designed in Austria, you know, in uh, what, 19, about 1970. And uh, been around. It's not a big secret. Most of you are familiar with it. it uh, you know, I'm not an expert on this bullpup design, but it's, uh, I guess, one of the uh, most successful early ones, uh, you probably could say. You can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But it's the one I'm familiar with, having seen it for a lot of years. I remember being in a shooting match in the late 80s, and a fellow had one of these, this exact gun, uh, the A1. This is the early one, uh, and uh, was shooting it, and I thought, what in the world is that thing? Uh, but it is very interesting. For those who don't know, the bullpup brings the action and everything back here closer to your shoulder, and that enables you to have a shorter overall length of your, uh, your rifle. Okay? This thing has a 20-inch barrel. Okay, this is not a 16 inch barrel, it's not a 14 inch barrel, it's 20 inches. And so by bringing all this back, you, see, you notice the case is ejecting right there, uh, which of course you can uh, uh, convert it to a, for a lefty by putting a different bolt in and then popping this off and then you can shoulder it over here. Uh, and of course that would be very important when it, because it's coming right at your face. But uh, so that's what, what does that. Let's take a quick look at it here. It's pretty uh, pretty interesting design. And uh, we're clear. See right in there, <laughs> you know, it's interesting looking at the receiver back here. And push this lever down and look at that. Lo and behold, get that barrel out of there. Pretty handy. I think it's clear. You can see right through there. So kind of a takedown, huh? Pretty interesting. And uh, speaking of takedown, push this across. And comes the receiver. All that, the bolt and everything. So, I mean, it's just uh, an interesting design. You can even, uh, let's see if I remember how to do this, uh, take the uh, trigger assembly out without much trouble with the butt plate off. How's that? I mean, that is like something you would pick up at Walmart, isn't it? It's just like Mattel. You know, if Mattel still makes uh, toys, I always <laughs> say Mattel. <laughs> I don't know if they're even in business. Okay, pretty cool. That's the trigger group. So, pretty interesting. Now, see, now this is the only part that had a little trouble getting back together here. But, uh, see if I can remember how, what, I, what I did there exactly. But it's, uh, it, it's quite a gun. It's an uh, interesting design. And the advantage, of course, is you have a very short uh, firearm. You know? But yet you still have the same firepower. You have a long barrel. You get that, the same velocity out of your ammunition that you want from a 20-inch barrel. Uh, with a gun that is just not right, I think it's about 30, 31 inches long or something. So, pretty interesting. Bolt slides way back in there. Getting back together here. Your, uh, gas tube, your gas operation uh, up here on the right. As you can see on the right side of the barrel there, it's adjustable for uh, different ammo and that sort of thing. Set back down in there. Put the pin back across, hold it in. I think we didn't catch it there. Actually, you don't want to push on a bolt. That's what's going on. There we go. Okay. And pop the barrel back in. Very easy to take the barrel out, isn't it? It's just a simple, simple operation for sure. And it's ready to go again. Pretty a pretty interesting gun. You can uh, pull the grip up, down, wherever you want that. Uh, bolt back. Has a uh, 1.5 power scope on it. Okay, so it's not a uh, serious, you know, uh, telescopic so, uh, scope, but it does give you just a little bit of magnification. 
and I, I don't know if you've ever looked through one of these, but it has just a little circle in there. It's pretty interesting. Uh, it's, it's not what you'd expect. Let's take a few more shots. And so you just put that circle on whatever it is you want to shoot. And it's a small circle. Maybe you can uh, look through there, try to give you a look. I'll uh, hold it up over there. And I read that it was designed to basically encompass a man-sized target, I think at a couple hundred meters, something like that. So it gives you an idea how far away your target is. Let's try the red plate. It basically, it just uh, surrounds that red plate if you can hold it there. <laughs> Minor detail. I like it. I like it. Oh, John put a two liter over there on that barrel, didn't he? Let's see if we can encircle it. Ah, nice. Try a bowling pin. Look, I see it moving. <laughs> yeah, try to flake some more. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Wow. Oh, a pumpkin. I don't get in enough pumpkin shooting, do I? <laughs> well, so we're empty again. And you notice how the magazine comes out. Now, I've seen some people uh, really handy with these things. Like you grab, if you really want to be tactical now, you grab your loaded mag while it's up there and you pop the release. Let's see how they do that. Pop the release, throw that one out, and put the new one in. So, uh, but it, it, you know, it works very, it has a very positive latch and everything. So it's a pretty interesting uh, gun. These, uh, as I said, were manufactured in 70, or uh, designed in 1970. And then uh, the, I think the Austrians uh, adopted it for their military in 77. And then just talking about some of the dates, and, uh, and it was imported as a semi-automatic rifle and you know like this one of course and then in 89 uh, the import ban you know prevented these things from coming in so you just didn't see many back in the day and uh, the ones you did see were really expensive and of course during the uh, AWB assault weapon ban you know uh, they dried up again I understand but now there are they are available and there's an A2 and an A3 out there available uh, and they're different. They have a Picatinny rail where they, uh, you, so you can have more uh, options on your scope and you know, sighting systems, that kind of thing. Whereas this is the, the A1, this is the old school that, uh, you know, it's kind of a carry handle scope combined. And I don't know if you noticed, you, you have, how did that barrel get hot? I don't know if you noticed, you have a metallic sights on top of it. So that's pretty interesting. If you were to break the, uh, the glass in there or something you you're not you're not lost you got that and they do call it a carry handle you know i know the they are they call it a carry handle but you're not really supposed to carry it by the carry handle they say and uh what else about it here that i haven't pointed out trigger isn't bad uh people complain about the trigger on these things i i don't mind it it's kind of crisp but it's not that that hard or stiff i think on the select fire models i read that it's a progressive trigger you pull for semi-automatic, you know, it, it breaks maybe halfway back, and if you want the fun switch, you pull it all the way back. That's pretty handy if it works well. Never, never fired one, and uh, you know, it's just got everything you need right there in a small package. And you know, you take that thing apart if you're just transporting it. You needed, uh, you know, just a small space. You see how quick it is to to reduce it to whatever length that is. I guess that is about 20 inches, you know, for the entire thing. And then with a, a magazine, you know, nice. You notice the magazines are clear. You can see the rounds. You've got the, the larger ones. These hold 42 rounds. You've got your 30 round magazines. And, uh, you know, these are all the magazines that I, that I have, the uh, the owner uh, had, which is great. 
nice uh, supply of magazines there. I think I read that you can get a stock uh, for these, maybe it's just the A3, the new ones, that will accept the, uh, the AR-15 magazines. So that might be an option, somebody was interested in that. And I'm not sure what the A3s are selling for, uh, but uh, they are available. Put the barrel back on, she's better with that. Uh, bullpup design, again, your action's right back here. So you can see the bolt in there. There's the bolt face, it's almost back at the end of the stock. It's just really strange, isn't it? Most people consider these things pretty ugly, including me. However, if something's really functional and you get something out of it, you know, for the ugliness, yeah, it's not all bad. There's a lot of ugly guns out there that are extremely reliable and, uh, and wonderful, wonderful firearms. Let's take a couple more shots. You just have to get used to the uh, loading system, you know, because it's back here. Maybe a little handier, you know, if it's up there. But, you know, once you get used to it, it's really not that bad. Just pop it in back there and uh, go. Uh, what do we have left we can shoot? We can't shoot the steel too much. Let me take a couple more shots at the plate. I think I figured out where to hold on him. Just up a little bit. Try this pumpkin a little bit closer. There you go. <laughs> I wanted that pumpkin to know I was there. So uh, anyway, the star uh, or the Steyr uh, AUG now. I don't know if I mentioned this. Uh, I have short-term memory loss, of course. You know, a lot of people call it the AUG. That's that's really about all I've ever heard it called. Officially, technically, it is proper to call it the AUG. Okay, it's a Universal Army Rifle stands for, and uh, that is the proper designation. Uh, but again, what's in a name? You know, by any other name, still a rose. But uh, you'll hear people call it AUG. Don't give everybody a hard time because they don't call it by the right name. Uh, you know, that's just what we do, whether it's firearms or anything else. We, uh, we go the lazy route, don't we? When we name something or we uh, just refer to it in our slang, we, we, want, it, uh, we want one word, AUG, instead of A-U-G. You know, essentially, you know, three words with the pronounce. So that's just, uh, but just so you know, okay. Uh, interesting gun. Again, this is the older one. This is the A1. But, uh, you know, they haven't changed appreciably other than, you know, the Picatinny rail and, uh, more flexible sighting system. Uh, just uh, I've not held a new one, but I've seen some videos on them and, and you know how they seem to operate. Uh, basically the same same thing. So uh, pretty cool rifle uh, adopted by a lot of a lot of countries like Ireland, where is Australia, New Zealand, uh, where else? Uh, Pakistan, uh, Argentina. I think even our custom service you know uh, uses these things. So you see them. You see them in some movies too, don't you? They're they're Kind of interesting looking and you can see why hollywood be, would be attracted to it they're looking for something different usually it was a desert eagle or just something everybody's not packing around like an ugly glock and uh it, it fits that bill pretty pretty well because it's a very distinctive looking firearm and very effective very effective i, I like it i mean it's the little shit i brought it out here the first day few, several days back uh, when i brought it home i thought well let's see if this thing shoots <laughs> what it's like and i put it on that red plate and Bam, 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 hit it the first three times, even with that strange sighting system. I thought, okay, this thing works, doesn't it? This is pretty cool. So anyway, the Star AUG, uh, pretty nifty little gun. Uh, I'd have to say life is good.